What a year, right? Well, it probably seems a little cliche at this point. We recognize that 2020 has been a year unlike any in recent memory. From a global pandemic to civic unrest to an extremely contentious election season, it has often seemed like hell must be throwing everything at us, including the kitchen sink. We're all worn and weary and in need of some rest and hope. Unfortunately, the holidays are often anything but restful, aren't they? If anything, uh, the days are just filled with non-stop to-dos, activities, more stress, and the rush to fit everything in. And for many of us, it can feel like we're just barely making it to New Year's alive. And in the midst of the frenzy and the stress, we often miss what this season is truly all about. Does the true meaning of Christmas even matter anymore? Are we just running around all month for silly old-fashioned traditions? Most of us probably know that all this began with a story in the Bible, but how do we know we can even trust that anymore? And if we can't trust it, then why are we adding more stress and busyness at the end of a long, already stressful year? If you've ever wondered in your own spirit if all this really matters, don't worry. You're not alone. You're normal. All the questions are understandable, especially this year. But especially because of how stressful this year has been, we want to help point you and your loved ones back to the true meaning of Christmas. It's not the busyness and stress. It's not the goofy traditions and decorations. We firmly believe that the true story of Christmas is the hope and the peace that we all so desperately need. And that's why we've created this guide. Not to add one more thing to your to-dos, but rather to help direct you away from the to-dos and toward some times of stillness that will draw all of us back to what this time is all about. It's our hope and prayer that over the course of these 12 days, this will lead you and your family into the true beauty of this season, guide you deeper into the story, and draw you closer together. So take a moment, take a breath, and just be still for a moment. We'll wait. Now, join us as we set aside the stress, the noise, and all the distractions, and spend a few minutes each day getting reacquainted with what Christmas is all about. Let's start with the basics. How do we know we can trust all this anyway? Day one, Jesus is Lord. It seems like with each passing year, there are more and more people struggling with doubts and hard questions about the Bible. If you're one of them, we're glad you're here. We do not shy away from those hard questions because we love and serve a God who doesn't either. In fact, the Bible is full of places where instead of making us feel bad about our skepticism, it actually invites it. In his first letter to a town called Thessalonica, the Apostle Paul encourages the struggling believers to test everything, hold fast to what is good, in 1 Thessalonians 5.21. And while Scripture repeatedly encourages people to have faith, it also gives us many other examples where God welcomes our doubts. Struggling with doubt and hard questions is nothing new. It's been part of the Christian story since the beginning. So what questions are you struggling with? Okay, so struggling with hard questions isn't uncommon, but are there good answers? Yes, there are plenty. For starters, we know with confidence that we can trust the Bible. Despite common objections that criticize it from being too old or out of touch or not relevant to today, The more time you spend with God's Word, the more you'll discover that the opposite is actually true. In fact, one could argue that in light of everything going on in our world today, it's never been more in touch and relevant. But how do we know we can trust it? And that's a great question. And there are some even greater answers. Of all the ancient works and literature in the world today, from works like those of ancient Greeks to biographies of famous ancient leaders like Alexander the Great, we have more ancient copies of the Bible than any other famous work. And that's not, it's not even close. This is important because the more ancient copies or manuscripts we have, the more we can compare them and see if they match up with the other into the modern copies we have of the books today. So whereas there are only about 400 manuscripts of the biographies of Alexander the Great, we have more than 24,000 manuscripts of the Bible. Furthermore, the biographies of Alexander the Great were written 400 years after he died. 
In the Bible, the four biographies of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, were written within the decade or two of Jesus' death and resurrection. This matters because the eyewitnesses who were there when Jesus went to the cross were still alive when those accounts were written. Any one of them could have easily come forward and said, hey, that's not what happened, I was there. And yet the Gospels have all stood the test of time. Jesus himself has a lot of proof on his side too. There are about 300 prophecies about Jesus and his life throughout the Bible, including the ones about where he would be born and to whom he'd be born to and who would be present and how he would die and that he would rise again from the dead. Some of these were foretold as many as a thousand years before Jesus was even born, and yet he fulfilled every single one. A mathematician once calculated the odds of this happening as one to a hundred quadrillion. So how does this strengthen your faith to know that the Bible is backed up by other reliable sources? Entire sections of libraries are filled with books full of proof and explanations like this. But to be brief, we know this. We have plenty of good reasons to trust what the Bible says, and its message is this. God created us because he loves us and wants a relationship with us. But we chose to rebel against him, first Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 1, and then each one of us in our own way. We may not even realize it, but we all fall short of God's standard, and it's called sin. The bad news is, is that there's nothing we can do to fix it. There are not enough prayers or charity work or being nice to each other we could ever do to make up for our sin. But the good news is, is that God has already done it for us. God sent his only son to earth, born as a baby, to live and to grow up and eventually pay the price for us once and for all. We can't save us, but he already has. And all we have to do is receive salvation is put our faith in Jesus. That's what Christmas is all about. That's why we celebrate this beautiful season, because what God has done for us is worth celebrating and sharing with the entire world. Jesus came to be the hope for everyone, and he offers this free gift of salvation to everyone. But we have to accept this gift in order to receive it. We have to choose to put our faith in him. And if we do, we can rest assured we have an eternal hope that is bigger than any problem the world can throw our way. Our lives may not become easy, but our difficulties will be much different compared to the glory of eternity with God. Will you now take that step of faith and acknowledge Jesus as your Lord? A family challenge for you is to create your own historical evidence of this Christmas by taking a family photo and tagging at Mission Hills Littleton. Pray together and ask God to work in your lives as a family the next 12 days and to fix your eyes on him this Christmas season. Thanks for joining us for day one of our 2020 Family Christmas Devotional. Be sure to join us tomorrow for day two as we look at what it truly means to be part of something much larger than yourself as seen through the life of John the Baptist.